My name is Richard Wilkinson, and this is the sacred narrative of Mithraism. This is for a Greek and Roman religions class, history of religion, or at the graduate level. Mithras was a Persian god whose references date back to 1400 BC with the Vedas and the Vesta, another record called the Buddha Hashim, which becomes important because a lot of the stories about him are influenced from these older records. So the narrative starts off with the birth of Mithras. He's born in a cave out of a rock or the cosmic egg, signifying his power. He's born with two men by him, a man named Kots and Katsapats. Kots and Katsapats are holding torches. Kots is holding the torches pointing up, representing the rising sun. Katsapats is holding a torch pointing down, representing the setting sun, which is very important in Mithraism. Astronomy, astrology becomes extremely important uh, in their doctrine and their rituals. And the solstice is seen as the entrance of the soul from immortality into mortality and back into mortal immortality. In these depictions of the story, Mithras is usually is always naked. He's wearing a Phrygian cap. Sometimes he's holding a knife. There's always a bow and arrow close by as well. Sometimes the knife is being held by Saturn, Oceanus, or Neptune, depending on the depiction and, and the region it's, the depiction is from. And this is because in the, the oldest stories, the Aryan Indian gods were trying to get Mithras to join them in killing Soma, the god of life. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And so scholars seeing that the depictions of Saturn and one of the other gods holding the knife is them asking Mithras to kill Soma so that they could get his power. Also in these depictions is sometimes two shepherds or a couple of shepherds. And if you're familiar with the birth of Christ and that the depictions of him with the shepherds coming. A lot of Christians picked up on the similarities and they really didn't like Mithraism. And these similarities run throughout these stories. And we'll see that as we go on. And this made the Christians, once they became the former religion of Rome, to heavily persecute Mithraism because they saw Mithraism as ripping off their sacred ideas, uh, sacred stories, even though these stories and some of these ritual elements are from a much, much earlier date. The second story in this narrative is the water miracle. And so this miracle has Mithras shooting an arrow into a rock to get water. And there's always two men in these stories, one begging Mithras for help, the other waiting to catch the water. Scholars seen that this was a time of drought and, and the people were asking Mithras to give water because there was none. In some of the depictions, we have cots and cotter pots. And there's an inscription talking about how Mithras is giving them nectar that would give them power and immortality, which is similar to some Christian stories about Moses and how Moses was giving divine refreshments to the Israelites. By the way, the story of Mithras getting water from a rock is similar to Moses getting water at Mount Horeb and striking it with his, a rock with his staff. After the water miracle, the next story that comes in these depictions is the hunting of the bull. Now, bulls are significant in many Ancient religions, if you look at Katsuhuyak, there's bulls everywhere. Um, and so we have this bull that's significant also in Mithraism. And the bull represents, I mean, some scholars think that represents the female portion of creation, but definitely represents life. And life springs from the bull. We'll see that in a minute. It's also connected with the god Soma, the god of life, that Mithras is. The oldest tells is supposed to go and kill. And so Mithras is hunting the bull in some pictures, he's riding it, in others he's chasing it. By the way, he keeps going into the bull, 
falls down in exhaustion. And then he either drags it or picks it up and throws it over his shoulders and takes it to a cave, the universe again. And there is where he kills the bull. And before we get to the killing of the bull, that story, anciently hunting was seen as a, almost a sacred event. The gods protected you, they helped you, and so at the end of the hunt, many people would make a sacrifice to the gods and have a meal. And we'll see this with Mithras as well. So the next story and the most important story of the sacred narrative of Mithraism is the killing of the bull. And this scene is shown in all the Mithraean, the holy places of Mithras. It's on a huge relief and it has him standing above the bull, slitting its throat, the blood coming out and turning into grapes and wheat with semen also coming out representing life and then the power of giving life. There's also some other elements, especially the raven, which is the messenger of soul to Mithras or from Ahura Mazda to Mithras that we'll talk about in a minute as well. So the bull, as I said, represents Soma, the god of life in the older stories. And in the older stories, the gods take Soma or this plant called Hoama, which is the representation of Soma, and they crush it under a rock, and then they drink the juices. We're going to see this in Mithraism, where Mithras take the blood of a bull that they sacrificed, and they mix it with the juice of the Hoama plant. And this mixture is supposed to give them physical strength and eternal life, along with eating the blood of the bull. And so we can see some similarities here with Christianity, with Christ, the Last Supper, the Eucharist of taking the body and blood of Christ and eating that, drinking that in the form of bread and wine, and that giving Christians a renewed life, rebirth, and immortality. The same thing applies with the blood of the bull and Hoama and the eating the bull's flesh. So, and I said these stories can be found, at least elements of them can be found in the Vedas and the Vesta and the Buddha Hashan. Um, some scholars will even say that Mithras is in some way killing himself, but I think that one's kind of pushing it. The next stories has to deal with the relationship between Sol and Mithras. And so the next story is the obscenes of soul to Mithras, soul being the sun god. And the relationship between these two is a little bit weird because while soul is giving commands and orders to Mithras, he is also kneeling down and giving, showing that Mithras is above him. So many scholars think that soul is acting as a messenger between Ahura Mazda and Mithras. And hence the raven, the messenger bird, flying between them in the, the depictions. So these next stories, the depictions of them have soul kneeling at an altar, or sometimes just kneeling in front of Mithras. And Mithras is giving him a Phrygian cat, or what looks like the shank of an animal. Uh, Roger Beck, a Mithraic scholar, believes that this is Orsa Major, which in the Egyptian astrology represents the power to control the cosmos. So it's a symbol of Mithras's power. In one scene found at Nursai in Italy, Sol is seen kneeling in front of an altar, holding Mithras's right hand with a dagger about to stab or cut Mithras' wrist. And Mithras is holding Sol's other hand with a, or holding a dagger about to cut soul's wrist, and this is a blood pact. And you see similar images around the Roman world. Sometimes they're standing up by an altar, but again, with daggers about to cut each other's wrist to make this blood pact. Sometimes they, there's a spit of meat, and the, sometimes the raven is holding the spit, and they're about to eat it. Next 
depiction that we have is Sol and Mithras shaking hands, sealing their friendship, and their um, alliance together. They also eat a meal together. It's the raven, this bit of meat. But this is not the sacred meal that the Mithras will use in their uh, mythology. That will come in a minute in their rituals. The act of shaking hands, the soul and Mithras shaking hands, is one of many initiation rituals that comes from these stories. Pretty much every one of these stories will be re um, rehearsed like a play by the members of the Mithraic cultists to go from one level of the priesthood to another. And so to enter the Mithraic cult after being taught about the cult and various information, which we're not sure exactly they're taught, but we know they, there's a period of being taught. The initiate shakes the hand of the path of the highest rank of the order, and there's one in every Mithraeum, and is brought into the cult, much like Sol and Mithras. The next story is the second most important story in Mithraism. In a lot of areas, they would have it carved in the back of the killing of the bull so you could and have a set where you could turn it at uh, certain times in the rituals when it needed to be seen. So after the bull is killed, Mithras and Sol sit down and eat a sacred meal. And this consisted of the blood and flesh of the bull along with wheat, sometimes fish and fruit. And then again, this takes place in a cave representing the cosmos. And we know a lot about this because Justin and Tertullian both talk about it and talk about how to rip off of the Christian Eucharist. And again, the Mithras believe that by eating this sacred meal, they would be reborn, resurrected, given physical power and eternal life. The last story in this series of myths, shows Mithras and Sol ascending to heaven in a fiery chariot, a four horse chariot. And sometimes there's uh, Oceanus and Neptune also in these pictures watching as they ascend up over him. Um, Oceanus at some point was connected with the god of heaven, so you think this might have been a leftover of that, but that's the last thing now. A lot of these are similar to Christian themes. And so with this last story, if you look on a Christian sarcophagi, you will see a fiery chariot with the soul of the person who's being buried, being taken up to heaven over a personification of the River Jordan. And again, a lot of these themes, the mill, the sacred mill, the idea of the Hoama and it giving power and eternal life. And these are very, very old themes coming from ancient Aryan religion, maybe even older than that. And so probably not being copied, but maybe having a similar source at some point in time. Now, this is the sacred path of Mithraism, or the sacred narrative of Mithraism. And these myths are used in the rituals and are found in most of the Mithraeum. Sometimes you know, one or two is left out. Always the sacred mill and the killing of the bull is there in every Mithraeum. Um, there are some regional differences as to how they look, but the main narrative is the same. Thank you for listening to this narrative of the sacred narrative of Mithraism. Thank you.